Throughout all of these episodes of Tequila and Benetti, it's probably easy to wonder, just how is this series advertised? Sure, we've seen the print ads for the show, but what about on TV? Given the shifts in tone that the show has, how on earth did they advertise it on television? I'm so glad you asked, because here is how the show was sold before the premiere aired. CBS Tequila and Benetti Police Dog Auditions, take one. I don't need this job. I don't need any of you. I think I'm at the wrong audition. Seen it before. I'll do anything for the job. Who let the pig in? Yeah, I can play a dog. That's him. He's perfect. Tell me something I don't know. Tequila and Benetti premieres January 17th on CBS. <laughs> Give it up. Couple things. I had no clue the Taco Bell Chihuahua got lost on its way to that audition. Arnold from Green Acres had a hard time getting work after that show ended. I love the implication that the poodle is willing to fuck someone to land this role. And who wouldn't want to see Lassie track down rapists and murderers? Speaking of which, more shows that have villains named the parking lot rapist need ads that feature talking dog auditions. Of course, there are plenty of ads that actually do show the content of the series, especially when advertising for specific episodes. Tequila and Benetti track a killer. Will a psychic secret vision help him? Or lead him into a deadly trap? Tequila and Benetti. The answer is yes. Yes, her secret visions help them. Then, guess who returns to Las Vegas? Harry, it's him! And he wants you to join in the fun! Thank you very much. The King is back on Hearts of Wild, tonight! Anyway, Wonder Dog comes to us from Frequent Series director Rob Bowman, and written by Robin Bernheim and Richard Oakey, and at this point it's pretty much a given that whoever the writer is also worked on Quantum Leap. Wonder Dog combines the plots of searching for a house robber slash murderer and Tequila becomes a commercial actor. Can't wait to see the tone that the opening sets. <laughs> yes, someone has burned alive. While Benetti saves the woman inside, Tequila needs his save the baby moment. <coughs> Oh, wow. You need to teach your little Nino some manners. You popped me right in the nose. Thought I was a burglar. <laughs> there you go, honey. Good job. Somewhere between tequila going in there and bringing the baby outside, the baby punched him in the nose. Let's wrap this up with some class. Look over here. It was that stanky diaper that saved him. It goes from a woman and a baby being trapped in a house fire to shit joke, to dead kid. It's the most Tequila and Bonetti opening of all Tequila and Bonetti openings. It's a slow news day, so Tequila saving the baby is the top headline. Maybe it's a misprint. Underdog really saved the baby, and the rest of the episode is them trying to stop an illegal shipment of energy pills. It's such huge news that an ad agency actually offers Tequila a contract to begin appearing in commercials but I thought he already passed the audition. Benetti is needed on this assignment, too. You and I have a power lunch down at the Yacht Club. Oh. I'll be cutting the deal, you'll be acting as Tequila's official bodyguard and handler. Yes, they should be solving crimes, but come on, Tequila in a commercial? That's far more important. Yeah, really, I can handle myself. And need I remind you of the fact that Garcia and I are working a major robbery investigation right now? Look, it's been several hours since the robbery. There's no way they're getting caught at this point. I have a feeling this is exactly what it was like when Menachem Golan met with Clyde the Orangutan to pitch him going bananas. Benetti isn't too keen on Tequila acting. He's gonna have to move, right? Do things, you know, like sit, stand. Mm -hmm. Here, well, you're out of luck. Because this free-spirited, independent, spontaneous dog could use a dose of obedience. Um, he should know how well Tequila is trained. A major plot of the previous episode hinged on that. But we get a different kind of Tequila here. Ahem, <clears throat> how do you like this angle here? <laughs> Your star, Tequila. Nice looking dog. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> the fame has gotten to his head, so in this episode, we get pretentious tequila. 
Tequila is immediately hired to do ads for a home security company, and believe it or not, this actually ties into the robbery case that was taken away from Benetti. Gold badge? That's you? That's me, along with a dozen other ex-cops. You know, I'm working on a major robbery investigation involving two of your clients. He's either the villain, or he knows the villain. Bonetti immediately suspects that security CEO Harry Durday is hiding something, so he wants to inspect the security firm before they hire Tequila. Unless, of course, you have a problem with showing us around, Mr. Durday. <laughs> well, gotta hide the bodies. Harry only hires ex-cops, or cops' families, to work for him, all of whom scream villains. Detective, I hire people who are either ex-cops or cops' family. Cool, I can get behind that. Thanks, Tequila. That's when they meet Charlie, the man who designed the company's systems. Charlie here is the eyes and ears of this whole operation. And brains. <laughs> That's right. Charlie's designed all our systems, he's installed them, and he operates everything right from here. He's the villain. We all know that Harry is no longer on the force after his failure as police captain in Fade to Black. And of course, Captain Knight sees nothing wrong here. I, for one, can say with great confidence that this is a product that we can represent with real pride. Right, Tequila? Yeah, especially if I get to meet that cute little steak snatcher. Did he hear him answer that? Why else would he have asked Tequila that question? Another robbery is taking place. This time, the bastards are stealing a box of chocolate coins. <laughs> and he's pissed off that he never learned to read. But Bonetti figures that this particular robbery is either just a cover-up or leading to something much greater. Well, we were just in the neighborhood and we uh, brought you some donuts. If we were just in the neighborhood, then I'm Don King. Well, you may actually be Don King. But forget the robbery case. Tequila has a commercial. Don't make them regret passing on the pig. Mm. Let's see that million dollar smile. <laughs> there you go, baby. <laughs> Isn't he incredible? It is incredible. He understands the command smile. Remember last time when I promised you a scene where Tequila wins an Oscar? I wasn't lying. Granted, it is in a fantasy sequence, but still, this is a real scene in Tequila and Benetti. A star. And the winner for Best Dramatic Actor is Tequila! <laughs> Hey, if Andrew Garfield could be nominated for Hacksaw Ridge instead of Silence, then anything's possible. I'd like to thank my mama and papa, and I'd like to thank all the little mutts and mongrels who made this possible, but I, I can't remember all of your names. <laughs> I, for one, love Frasier Tequila. And, uh, quick question, was it easy or hard to put the tux on the dog? It had to have been easier than when he's in a police uniform later on. Yeah! And I couldn't have done it without Fluffy here. Oh, baby. <sighs> of course he has a trophy wife. This is his second marriage after that one poodle fucked him for a part. Anyway, the robbery plot. Harry is still very standoffish about letting Bonetti investigate. Well, I hope this doesn't adversely affect my contract, Mr. Man. Tequila, people could die. Still, there's more important things, like Tequila's contract. All transportation to and from the job must be by limousine? Stretch preferred. I didn't do it. Addendum B. There has to be a poodle on the set of every photo shoot? Uh, how... How was that negotiated into his contract? It turns out Harry was previously investigated for racketeering, plus... I ain't thought Harry was dirty! Oh, Harry Durday was Durday Harry. That's very clever. His name is Harry Durday. Could be a Dirty Harry reference, or it could mean that he's dirty. Arrest him now. Unfortunately, there's another robbery, this time from a Cinemax set, I think, or a Late Night USA series. Writer Robin Bernheim did work on Silk Stockings. Damn it, this person is getting killed. Now we'll never get another sequel to Animal Instincts. I particularly love the placement of the ad bumper here. It goes right in between robber killing a woman and happy music with a dog!
Stick around. Tequila and I will be right back. We're back, and yes, that woman is still totally dead. There's a minor subplot in the episode where Garcia and Benetti have a bet that Benetti can't go a whole day without trashing California. Say, I told you so, you La La Land cops are a bunch of cream puffs. What, and lose my bet? Garcia may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. But since you did bring it up, I did say the next break-in was gonna be a murder, didn't I? Benetti, someone died. I guess it's more important that Detective Lee gets his toothbrush back after Tequila stole it to whiten his teeth up before the commercial. Then we can hear about the evidence. No, no, no. Pump up athletic shoes, the kind that are very, very popular with teenagers. You don't have to tell me. I know what those are. I had them, and I still sucked at basketball. Lee is being a total dick about Benetti helping with the case. Hey Lee, remember when you nearly died and Benetti gave you the confidence you needed to come back to the force? Well, fuck you too. On the commercial set, Midian Knight wants to be Tequila's own personal writer, and I think he got that job. While I do have several questions, I'm curious as to why you're coming to me with this. I can't copyright your script. But you're a key supporting character in my story. The script has to be Lloyd approved. Hard telling if his script truly became Lloyd approved, though. Oh, well, that's that's just flat out adorable. Now if he can memorize his lines and take direction. All right, I sense danger. I sense... <laughs> Please, I, I can't work this way. I'm trying to concentrate here. I sense danger. Cut. I'm not saying that the Police Academy series would have been improved by including a talking dog. I'm saying that it definitely would have been improved by including a talking dog. Tequila trying to take the uniform off is also adorable. Can't wait for the sudden mood change to happen. I don't have to take this from some snot-nosed East Coast kid killer. I was just two years short of my 20 when I quit. In this universe, everything escalates fast. Just listen to the music. I can think of only three reasons why a good cop couldn't smell a killer right underneath his nose. Either you're covering for him, or you just can't see it. Or you are the guy. The music wants me to think he's evil. Mmm, misdirect. Tequila seriously gets fired from the commercial when Harry and Benetti get into a fist fight. Well, at least now they have time to solve the robbery case. This requires a moment of quiet reflection. I so miss the era where even a talking dog show could look like Miami Vice. Hey, that's supposed to go on the piano solo! Harry claims that all of those racketeering charges were because he was framed by someone who wanted him off the force. Now he and Benetti can solve this crime together. You gonna sit there getting sand in your pants? Or are you gonna help me shake the tree? Hey, let's get shaking! Tequila's been waiting all day for someone to say shake. While Harry and Benetti begin reprogramming houses, Garcia goes to the home of, uh... <laughs> well, uh... Countdown to rescue Garcia time. Charlie has been wanting to get revenge against Harry because Harry injured him. Although, does that really matter? I think he's fine now. B! Come on, B! Oh, forget it, man. You humans can stay here and flap your gums all you want. Me, I got a job to do. You sure you don't want to negotiate more poodles in your contract? Whenever it cuts back to Charlie and Garcia, it straight up turns into a slasher film. That is, if the slasher film also included a talking dog. Like the one in Halloween 5. Yeah, that totally happened. Hey, when you were a captain, didn't you have some cops that just had instinct? Yeah, yeah. Well, that cop's got a ton of it. But only when the killers have a very heavy burrito diet. Charlie is played by actor, writer, producer Patrick Massett, whose credits include writing for and producing Caprica. And if he's mad now, wait till that show gets canceled. 
This is the second episode in a row where the villain is someone who wants to get revenge on an antagonistic cop for something bad that happened to them. Hi there. <laughs> Only way more Jack Torrancey. Save your bullets, Benetti. You may need the rest for Buffalo Bill here. Charlie mentions that he was crippled by Harry while Harry was pursuing a suspect, but he obviously healed, so what's the point of this revenge? They insert a stock angry tequila shot from the runt of the litter episode when tequila was reacting to Casey's fugitive brother. The biggest twist here is that the villain doesn't die. Be brave. Do it. Drop it, Benetti. Drop the gun. Close your eyes. No! Hey, what are you doing, man? Why are they reacting as if Benetti doesn't shoot a majority of the show's villains? After Charlie is apprehended, Tequila gets his commercial deal back, and Benetti is free to make California jokes because it's been over 24 hours. And what kind of commercial is this? Poodle? Poodle? Did someone say poodle? Gangway! Booyah! I didn't say action! Get him out! Action! I don't need you to say action. <laughs> Probably just rehearsing. Uh, rehearsing? I think not. Oh, I get it. They're not making a commercial. They're making that movie Porn Dogs. Better take five, everybody. Yo, make that 15. <laughs> well, that is all in Tequila's contract. This episode was amazing. Much like in Fetch This Pal, it heavily injects a dog-centric plot into the case of the week. And I love that the downfall of the villain wasn't that Benetti was already investigating it, but that Benetti had to be taken off the case and Tequila had to become a commercial actor and then get hired by the security agency at the center of the robberies in order for the case to get solved by all of this being a heavy coincidence. But more importantly, Tequila dresses in a cop uniform, wins an Oscar, and someone fucking dies. This episode is a success. On the next episode, Gina the Psychic, the one who can actually hear Tequila, returns. Goody.